she comes. <laughs> She looks so worried. Look at her little face. So concerned and tired. She looks like an angry toddler. A child sent to her room without supper. I, on the other hand, look like I can be a good room for her. I look like one of those cheap tourist traps in the middle of the city. I look like one of those hotels you don't remember what they look like. All cheap walls and stone steps. My My sign sign out front front still boasts boasts about having having color TVs in all my rooms. My My lobby lobby is barely an entryway, and my rooms are in a separate building wrapped around a cracked parking lot. Even the staff uniforms are dull, drab, grays and beiges. Maybe you've seen a place like this? With the ironwork fence keeping you away from the filthy pool? Maybe you drive by it every day and wonder what kind of person would check in there. The kind of person who's checking in here right now is stomping mad. Or stumbling tired. It's so hard to tell. People are so delicate. Just a few days of driving without stopping or sleeping and they can barely function. Get them a little too worked up and they get so mad they try to hurt each other. Try to kill each other. Try, try, try. I can do it without breaking a sweat. She's sweating though. She's watching my front doors like she expects someone to come flying in with that kitchen knife again. As if I'd let anyone else come in and disturb her. Hmm. But disturbed she is anyway. All the lobby boy did was ask if she had any bags, poor thing. He can see she doesn't, but he still has to ask. <laughs> Oh, he still looks more or less like a person. He hasn't hasn't even started started to rot yet. yet. She's She's just just a little little jumpy around him, I think. He He can can take some getting used to. She She probably probably won't have time to get used to him, though. No. No, we've we've got got a lovely room room for her, and he worked so hard on it. She She doesn't want him to take her to the room. Oh. 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 She's She's leaving leaving him there with nothing to do. I shift my hull slightly to make it easier for her to find her way. She doesn't seem to notice, which I find strange. I think I do anyway. She's constantly looking over her shoulder and pausing around corners. Always looking and never seeing. I can see everything, of course. I see the lobby boy shuffling back to his closet, the skin on his fingers already receding and toughening. The manager sees him and checks her own nails to see if she's starting to spoil. Not yet, dear. But she can't see the blood vessels in her eyes have already burst. I just just think people people look so nice when when they die. I look inside the office. The The owner owner is there. there. He's not doing anything, though. Just staring at the walls. Looks Looks like he's pouting to me. Maybe I'll give him something to pout about when he reports back to me. Maybe I'll give him something to pout about right now. I think think about about it. it. I hold him in my mind. And I know he knows it. His reports are always better when he's paying attention, so before I let him go, I give the walls walls of the office a little squeeze. He's lucky I don't stick him in the supply closet with the lobby boy. Everyone's already tucked away. Even the guest is already in the room. She's checked the locks and drawn the curtains, and she's even pushed the table up against the door. She washes her face with very cold water in the bathroom and checks the locks and curtains again. 
She passes the room, chewing on her fingers, tearing little red bits of skin away from the flesh. Bleeding and scared, and we haven't even begun yet. Wonderful. The anticipation, I feel, shudders through the staff. Their attention turns to the guest. They watch through pale and soft rotting eyes from their stations as the fruits of their labor comes to bear inside me. The bathroom, to the locks, to the curtains, to the bathroom, to the locks, and over and over again she goes. I don't even think she's aware she's doing it. Pacing the room endlessly and endlessly, trapped in her own behavior. Her conscious thoughts buried under a burning wave of the fear and trauma that chased her from her home in the dead of night. She ended up here, and we have fears and traumas of our own for her. Blood has started to beat on her fingertips as she nervously shreds more of herself away. I twitch. And the walls of her room pushing just a little. She, she checks, checks the locks again, and the back wall inches toward, inches toward her. Across, across the room and back again, each lap brings the walls tighter around her. She isn't seeing the room, though. She's looking past the room to whatever she needs a locked and barricaded door to keep out. She can't stop seeing that kitchen knife coming at her, and she looks for it again, peeking through her curtains. She's seeing her sweating, crying face in the car's rearview mirror. In the bathroom, she presses more cold water from the sink onto her face, hoping to hide the tears from herself every time she does this. The room shrinks a little bit more. Soon the room is no bigger than a smallish office, and she barely has to turn around to check the locks, check the curtains, check the bathroom. Unable to break the cycle in her mind, she becomes trapped in room 15. Oh, she is in real trouble now. The bed, the table at the door, all the furniture has finally caught up with her. Her fingers and chin are stained with smears of gore. Limpid pools of blood rest on the bathroom floor and counter, spilled from her constant chewing and washing. Her legs splinter at the ankles when the bed needs more gear than she's got to spare. It takes her mind off of the table, cracking her ribs one by one. She tries again to start her little cycle around the room, but the room has finally gotten itself around her. From their own little rooms, I can see my darling staff watch Susan Broder finally succumb to all that pressure. The Hotel was created and produced by Travis McMaster and Mark Whitten. Starring Kelly Ninaltowski as the manager. Mark Whitten as the lobby boy. Graham Rowett as the owner. And Krista Lewis. Music by Lauren Picorni, Wes Rodri, and special guest composer Zach Tatum Drake.